next talk, uh, we're going to be going to Tavi, um, and Tavi known as uh, Crespum also, or online. Um, welcome, Tavi. Um, he is a LSF uh, core contributor, an open source enthusiast, an embedded system engineer, uh, and a phenomenal project leader for Polaris. Um, so the talk, this talk is going to be about Polaris, uh, which is a machine learning uh, project for exploring and analyzing telemetry data from the Satnux network, but also beyond that. Um, and for this specific talk, uh, it seems that th this is the first time that the team has used Polaris not on telemetry beacons, but rather on real science data. Uh, and certainly you won't be disappointed by the results. So, Xavi, take it away. Hi. Thanks, thanks viewers. Um, well, uh, first of all, thanks for, the, for setting this conference up uh, in this hard year. Uh, so thanks to the organizers, thanks to also the, the to Libre Space, of course. And well, I wish I, I could I could um, I could see you live, but uh, it's what it is. Hopefully next year or the year after we will finally meet in person. Um, so today I'm going to talk a bit about Polaris. Um, I'm going to show you uh, a news case study uh, of some science data from Bobcat One satellite CubeSat. Um, I'm not a member of um, Bobcat team, so yeah. Excuse me if I make some some mistakes because I, I don't uh, I, I'm not a part of the mission. So yeah, this is just a case study of how to how to use Polaris, uh, not on Satnox data because um, science data is not on Satnox, um, but uh, rather on on science data that the team gave us for for the, the analysis. So, yeah, hopefully I can make this work, yeah. Uh, so, first of all, a little, a little bit of uh, background about Bobcat Satellite. Um, Bobcat is a satellite, a 3U CubeSat, the one you see in the picture. Uh, it was made by the Ohio University, that's in Athens, but not Greece, uh, Ohio, uh, the USA. Uh, it was launched on October the 2nd uh, in an entire rocket. And it went to the ISS, uh, to the International Space Station. And from there, it was launched, uh, if I'm not mistaken, through or with uh, nano racks for, uh, on November the 4th. And the mission goals, uh, of course, as, any, as pretty much any um, satellite that comes from a university, it has some education and outreach goals. Uh, so you can imagine uh, it's a real hands-on experience for, for students uh, in, in terms of outreach it's really important uh, because uh, well satellites get a lot of um, attention so it's a good opportunity to be part of this uh, kind of teams but also this satellite it had a, a scientific goal uh, which uh, hopefully there is someone from, from the team because, um, well, as I said, uh, I'm not part of the team and I don't fully understand the, the goal, but um, the, the goal is basically that you can measure uh, GNSS uh, interconstellation timing offsets. Uh, they carry a payload with uh, GNSS receivers. Well, actually, I think it's one receiver that can... Um, uh, get data from many, many GNSSS uh, satellites or constellations. And uh, because of the position, they can measure timing offsets, and this is very helpful for, for giving more um, accurate um, measurements about the other orbits. But yeah, uh, the, 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 ex the, the specific goal is not important for Polaris, uh, but yeah, it's just for you to understand the context a little bit. Um, and also, uh, Bobcat uh, is it's really integrated into Satnox. Um, so far, it has I think five 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 thousand or so uh, telemetry frames decoded, and you can also access the the dashboard. Uh, it's going to be a bit hard. I don't know how to do that, but if you, I will send you the presentation later. But if you click uh, here, you will go through the Subnox uh, dashboard where you can get the telemetry, the decoded telemetry. You can see the, the status of the of the satellite, 
Um, and that's because of the team, um, they have uh, made the decoder for that or, or they have uh, contributed with that to the Sadlox project. And thanks to that, uh, the team um, can also get telemetry from all over the world, uh, thanks to also Sadlox uh, stations. So yeah, they've been benefiting from this, uh, from this, um, from, sorry, so, yeah, someone published the link, my bad. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, I think I cannot access here. I can let me let me try to show you. Um, can I show you? Do you see? Do you see my? This is not the screen. Do you see my screen? Yep. We see the screen with other things yeah. though. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. This is the screen, right? All right. So this is the dashboard. Uh, you can see this is the well. This is the logo of the mission. Uh, you see the, the, the frames count, the uh, last frame was received uh, three hours ago, uh, the battery status and the, the historic data of this is solar power, um, solar panel power or battery. Well, you can, thanks to Satnox, they have uh, this information, not only when the CubeSat is over uh, Ohio, but also when it's over any of the stations of Satnox. And well, you can scroll more and more, and you have a lot of uh, these parameters. But in this case, um, we uh, I'm going to tell you something about Polaris now. But um, the difference is that uh, last year uh, we were showing. Um, last year uh, we used Polaris with Subnox data, and that's with Beacon data that everyone can access for, let's say for for free. Uh, but thanks to to Zabnox, of course. Um, but this year, instead of using that data, uh, we are using uh, science data uh, specific from the satellite. And um, that's really, well, that, that's really helpful because this data is not um, public on Satnox. It's private for, for this analysis. Hopefully it will be uh, open data soon. Um, but this is not, uh, this is not uh, the same as accessing this this telemetry that I, I have just shown you. Uh, so this year, Polaris, uh, we've made a lot of effort. Uh, we are now part of the Libre Space Foundation. Uh, we are one of the projects uh, of the, the Libre Space, and we are collaborating on man, um, uh, many other aspects. Uh, of course, it's also important that uh, we participated again of the Google Summer of Code. And uh, we had one wonderful student, Aditya, which I'm not sure if he's here, but uh, thanks. Um, you will see uh, what he's doing in a few secs. Um, th as part of the Google Summer of Code, we have integrated space weather uh, for the analysis. And we're also working, this is not done yet, but we're also working on behavior analysis of time series. And well, of course, uh, we support many satellites. Uh, we support many satellites, uh, like so two, cubic one, bucket one, and in fact, we don't need a decoder, so in fact, we support all of them. But um, this is the these are the ones that we have uh, used in the past. So I'm going to skip uh, fast because I, I want to show you the demo and not the the details of how we how Polaris works. Um, but overall, um, this is the same la the, uh, like last year. Uh, we fetch data from Satnox. Um, we learn, uh, this is the, the machine learning part. And then there is a way to, to visualize the data, which is just um, for now, for the, for the dependencies, we have a dependency graph that I will show you in a bit. And then we're also working on the anomaly detection, as I, as I told you, uh, but this is not uh, ready yet. And um, regarding the, the fetch part, uh, this is new also this year. Uh, it's, well, it's actually here and here. Uh, we fetch uh, space weather data and we merge that with the data from Satnox and that gives us some more context. And well, also, this is just details, but we are, uh, Polaris is written in Python and thanks to that, we are benefiting from the rich ecosystem. And these are just a few tools that we use that are available, uh, that are open source and available to, to everyone. Uh, XGBoost and Fetch, um, MLflow, Research, or Scikit, or even AstroPy from, from Juan Lu, who, who was in the talk before. 
uh, we use all these tools and thanks to, to open source and to the Python ecosystem. And I will show you, this is what the graph means, but I will show you in the real graph now. Uh, let's go to the demo. Um, for the demo, uh, we, well, we had to use a big server. It's, uh, it's got uh, 21 CPUs, 64 gigs of RAM and an SSD. And in this GPU, it took, and uh, no GPU, of course, uh, because this, is, this was a server from Ohio University. And it took 30 minutes here. And this included, this is not frames, but um, uh, lines, actually. Uh, and it's 441,000 uh, lines. So it's missing a K here. And that's uh, 172 megabytes. And each line contains a set of values uh, that belong to the same timestamp. And that's the space weather and science data. And regarding the science data, um, so the important is the, the carrier to noise ratio. And that's really important because the GNSS receiver, which is the main payload, uh, that's what um, uh, it uses. Um, then the, it has also, of course, a gyroscopes and magnetometers or even some positions that you will see. And space weather data, you will see that a lot of information in the, in the graph, but it's basically uh, daily geomagnetic data, daily solar data, daily practical data. Uh, with, and that's, that's a lot of parameters that, to be honest, I don't really understand all of them. And yeah, so let's go to the demo. Um, the demo you can access in this deepcast.space website. Um, I will share my screen now. You should see... You should see this now. Well, it's it's actually redirecting to another another website to PolarisML space, but yeah, it's it should be the same. So this is the graph that we've ob obtained. Um, what we expected and what the team expected was this. Uh, sorry, you can you can uh, go around the website. Uh, you can search. You can let's say we want to to find uh, the carrier to noise ratio. Uh, so as you can see, it's in the top uh, left. Uh, top left corner and you press enter and it, it will go through to the node and as you can see here um, carrier to noise ratio you can also drag this this uh, node if it's easier for you to, to understand and to move it around uh, it's really linked to radio flux and this is space weather 30 seconds because left sorry you have to finish up, finish up. all right so it is fast. Um, this is the carrier to, no to noise ratio. It's really linked to radio flux and also to, to the um, sun sensor. And this is to be expected. Uh, this is what the team expected. Uh, the carrier to noise ratio is really, um, it's really influenced by radio flux, by space weather, and also uh, the, the sun sensor. It, it's also really linked to, to carrier to noise ratio and to space weather, of course. So this is the main, uh, what they were expecting and what we saw in the data. This is, this uh, links just mean uh, the data is really linked. And also if you see this small um, uh, bots, uh, the speed, it means that the, the faster, the, the more significant the relationship is. The, the, so let's say here, uh, the significant of the, of the links is where it's uh, higher. Uh, it's more important that the, the relationship between C on R and the sun sensor rather than C on R and space weather. And then, well, you can also see a bunch of this stuff, but, but you can play with, uh, with it by yourself. Uh, this is the, the, the cluster of the space weather. The radio flux is it's linked to pretty much everything. You can also color uh, if you want to, to know about the gyros and you know you want to know um, you want to locate them, you can press control enter and you can color the gyros and that will make you uh, understand better if they are related to something or not uh, they should be really related to temperature but but to be honest only um, zero z is related to temperature uh, 
but yeah, um, it gave some interesting results. And this is only a few a part of the data because, as, as you saw, the the results were um, well. It took a lot of computational time. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You can play uh, with uh, the graph by yourself. Uh, visit the deep cows space. And um, yeah, thanks to the, the team, to Kevin and to Brian, and also to Polaris guys who helped me really much to, to make this possible. And now if you have questions, uh, I'm all yours. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Xavi, for that. And the first question would be, in the machine learning part, how are you generating the labeled data? Uh, so uh, the labeled data in the, in the graph, it comes from the, when you retrieve data from from Subnox, uh, it just have some some um, some date some label in there. Uh, sometimes we don't know. Uh, so, for instance, you see a sun sensor. That's clear what it is. But you see sun something, and we don't know what it is, uh, and we don't care because we don't do we don't perform the final analysis. But uh, the, the satellite operator is the one who who has to understand what it means. I, I can I can answer. So we, we don't actually uh, predict. So we don't we don't use uh, the the telemetry and labeled data as per supervised uh, machine learning methods. We use a supervised machine learning methods on the data itself. So the data is the labels. I could stop here. <laughs> okay. There was another question about the GNS antenna sitting on the minus Y face, and apparently it is. Uh, there was a question about the Python code uh, and where this is available, and we posted the link. That's on um, yes. uh, Polaris Group in, in GitLab under the LibreSpace Foundation repositories. Yeah, so you should have it on the screen now, I guess. Yep, yep, yep. And post the link. Um, any, any other questions? Anyone <laughs> from the room? Uh, well, just join us. If you have questions, we also have a channel on Riot, and you can ask questions there. Or, uh, it's a very open community, so you can ask questions, and I ask them questions every day, so that's... I'm, I'm going to ask a question. Uh, yeah. What's your plans for hosting this kind of uh, graphs for different missions and automatically generating them alongside the dashboards that we have for the missions? Well, that's that's an interesting question, and uh, this uh, study, um, let's say it was not easy because, uh, as I said, we usually uh, drink from Satnox, and this is not drinking from Satnox directly, so we need to do a bunch of adjustments, and I think we are going to have an interesting discussion about this uh, next week, uh, because we need to, as you said, uh, to host this uh, for different missions, and for different data, uh, no, I don't know if we we want to host it, but at least we want to make that uh, possible and easy. So it's going to be it's going to be uh, an interesting talk indeed. Cool. cool. And also, well, also because it requires a lot of power, computational power. So that's that's we'll also find a solution good. for that. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So thanks, thanks, Xavi, for this uh, really interesting talk and developments on on Polaris. Um, 